this top is is quite a messy honey, you know what I mean? Devante, what's his name? What's his name? Oh my god, he is falling. The girl who spit in that guy's face, I said, apps, never that. Jerome is a lie. Yo, ndate ole umaka and we are going to record whatever it is that we want to show and it's up to you. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Y'all don't even know half the work that goes into content creation. This is the problem, right? I suppose that's the thing about money is that you're constantly going to be surrounded with all these people. If you make your bed, you lie in it. How you get them is how you're going to lose them. And now that things have hit the fan for him, when you expect that I'm a stick beside him, that's my man. I'm a stick beside, when you think or would like to believe that she would stick beside him, she is out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is Katleo Malela. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much. You are my elite employee. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here as always thank you for choosing me over and over again please do subscribe to the channel if it's the first time you're seeing me then definitely please do join the JK family and if you do enjoy this video please give it a like at the end of the video also subscribe to the channel subscribe and join the membership space if you care there's more bonus content on there as well please do watch the ads it helps us so much as content creators and it gives us the opportunity to continue doing videos like this for you okay yes so welcome back to another controversial trending topics my take on those topics okay so we're gonna be chilling i'm going to be drinking my water minding my business i'm not going to be minding my business because i'm going to be all up in people's business okay okay but uh, here we are, we're going to be going through all of the suggestions that you gave me in terms of what you'd like me to speak about today. This video might be split into two parts as I normally do because there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of discussion and sometimes it becomes too long. So I split it into two parts of the video. So let's get started. I Without going any further, I'm going to say this one because I haven't seen it and I got a number of uh, responses for me to speak about this. The Tyler Perry, Mia Culpa, Mia Culpa uh, movie. I haven't seen it first and foremost let me tell you why i'm always late to jumping onto anything okay any trends any okay i don't jump onto trends but movies anything that's coming out i mean i'm only watching the house of the dragon now okay and and people have been watching it they're waiting for the next one okay they're waiting for season two i'm only on episode two right now so for me mia culpa i haven't watched it yet i haven't heard great things um love me some kelly Rowland. okay love me what's his name Devante. what's his name what's his name oh my god he is Woo! he is a delicious okay um i haven't watched it i'm not impressed with the reviews that i've been seeing from people i follow online and um yeah we'll leave it at that so once i do watch it i'll give a review on it somewhere on either one of my social media platforms but i haven't heard good things so we're gonna get that one out the way okay let's get it out the way the next one is let's be honest about big brother <sighs> the moment what's his name my cake what's his name the guy no uh, uh the guy with the b the guy who got uh removed from big brother yeah the one who was excommunicado from big brother yeah yeah when i saw what that guy had said 
and how inappropriate it was and what I've seen going forward. So he made some really horrible comments about one of his housemates um, and the fact that she was intoxicated and he was just like, yeah, no, he's going to sleep with her or what have you. And he was saying this to my care care or whoever the other guy is. I was just like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. First and foremost, there's a lot of people in that house. <laughs> was Big Brother always like that? There's a lot of people in that house. For me, it's just, it's not what it used to be. I used to be a big follower of Big Brother. I used to watch all the seasons, all of this, but eventually it kind of fell off for me. And some of the things that are happening in the house that I, I just, I can't get on board with. I can't get on. You know the girl who, the girl who spit in that guy's face? I said, apps, never that. You're going to catch me several streets away watching this. I am not going to watch this nonsense. I personally feel like what she did qualified her for an excommunicado. She should have been disqualified like uh, Block B, B. B. Bondi Blee, B. What was that guy's name? <laughs> Bravo B. Bravo B. I think it's Bravo B. Yes, I think it's Bravo B. If he managed to get disqualified for that, of course he needed to be. Yes, he was excommunicado. I feel like Liema should have done that that she should have been disqualified as well because that was incredibly inappropriate behavior. It does not matter that whatever it was encroaching on personal space, it was harassment. For me, that's harassment. If somebody is going to spit in my face, you're going to catch a case. You are going to catch a court case. I, I just, no, absolutely not. So I feel like there were some instances uh, based on what I saw online that were completely inappropriate and some people needed to be disqualified. I don't like the comments that people are making about, is it Balesa? What's her name? The plus size girl in the house and, um, you know, comments that they're making about what she eats and the portions that she gives herself compared to the portions that she gives other people. Um, this is essentially all the things that I see online. So if I'm on TikTok or if I'm on um, uh, X, this is, these are the things that I see. But do I agree with any of this? No. I think it's just... Ewey, Leman. Ah, what a fun, man. Ah, eh. Oh, what? Get big brother in Alhur Ile. Iwile, Iwile, Iwile. I I genuinely feel like it's not what it used to be, and some things are being let slide, which are completely inappropriate. And I I, it's worrisome for the sponsors of the Big Brother production. Oh. Another huge one that I got from a lot of people, Risa Tisa. Okay, let us talk about Teresa. <laughs> let me tell you. I loved it and I was I was one of the first to see it because I think I'd watched it shortly after she started releasing them and she was mid doing them right and uh, I was watching it on a Sunday night it was late at night I think it was around 10 o'clock and I just came across it and somebody was talking about it I went to her page and I was shook <laughs> God, Listen, there's, there's compulsive liars, and then there's pathological liars, and then there's legion. <laughs> legion should have been a prime, proper, case-by-case -case example of how men, and generally just how people can be. People can lie. And let me say, let me give Tisa Risa, Risa Tisa her flowers, okay? She is a fantastic storyteller. This is what you want when you're a storyteller. You need to get somebody so encroached in what you're saying from beginning to finish. If somebody had told me about Risa Tisa and I hadn't cropped up on her the night that I did finding those TikToks, if somebody had told me about it three days later, I'm not sure I would have watched it. I really am not sure I would have watched it because I, I wouldn't be like, what, 50 parts? 
10 minutes each pot 500 what are you talking about i just absolutely not absolutely not um it goes to show you how far manipulation goes jerome is a lie yo ndate ole umaka Uh, and by the time I'm recording this, he's already sat down for some sort of interview by a guy called Sway on YouTube. It was lie to lie to lie to lie. And you could see him. If you're somebody who watches, I watch a lot of um, body language YouTube channels. Observe is one of my favorite ones. And you could just see his eyes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so... Um, so yeah, my brothers, you know, I get on, he was never, ever, ever, ever looking directly into the screen. And that is a big show and indicator in terms of body language of someone who is lying. That guy is a lie. But, um, I need to talk to Risa though. I need to talk to Risa, Risa Marawai. Yeah? Marawai. Why, 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 why? There's certain things where I was just like, but girl... Girl, this person's been talking about getting you a house. This person's been talking about this. You are not getting answers. 2020. I'm not going to lie. I'm not First and foremost, how are you moving in with somebody after having only known them like a month? I do understand that there was going to be a COVID lockdown, but let the COVID lock us down separately. Yeah. Let the COVID lock us down separately. I am not inviting a strange man as much as I may have believed that this could be the potential love of my life. This is where we're at. You know, I really want to see if this works. We could see how it worked over FaceTime. We were going to see how it works over FaceTime, over Skype, over whatever other Zoom teams. Listen, we could do the date nights via teams. Hmm? We could do the date nights via teams because what I was not going to do is invite a complete stranger into my home. And I feel like that was the first red flag, even on Risa Tisa's side. But what I loved about her is that she, she took accountability. And I think it's one of the things that many people just fell in love with her story and her for because she was not shying away from saying, I'm after it up here. I messed it up here. I, I'm taking accountability. This was just me just being a dunderhead. Because there were moments where I was just like, what? Absolutely not. But for me, when people rallied in support of her, oh my God. Oh my God. When people rallied in support of her, this is what... I think I love social media for, you know what I'm saying? I love it because when someone is going through something or something has just happened to someone, you know, social media is the one platform where if you talk about your story and you share what just happened to you, if you're fortunate enough, you get people rallying on your side and things get done. I mean, girl is going to Paris and London. She's going, she's been wanting to go. She is going to Paris and London. She, it's just what BMW did. Uh. BMW was just like, yes, Risa Tisa girl. And they did a whole entire TikTok. And everybody was of the assumption that Risa Tisa is going to get her blue BMW cognac seats. Okay. X5. Okay. And she didn't. And BMW kind of just went mute. And they took down their TikTok. And then Hyundai said, we got you, girl. We got you, girl. So now she's doing these, you know, talk shows. And I saw recently she was on Good Morning America. And I'm like, girl, look at you. This should be done into a lifetime series. Listen, I loved the message that she said where she was like, you know what? I'm just doing this so that I could help out someone else who may be in a similar position or who may find themselves in a similar position to me. And I was like, that's it. That is it. Through your mistakes, somebody else is going to learn to make a better decision or leave an unhealthy and a toxic relationship through your mistakes. And that's, that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I feel like that is all that matters. So I was in. The Grammys, I didn't watch them. You know... <laughs> 
So this one says the recent tweets about influencers and YouTubers. Here's the thing. As a content creator myself, I can see it as a content creator consumer and as a content creator myself, I can see it from both ends of the spectrum. I will start, however, from the content creation perspective, okay? Content creators are going to show you what they want to show you. Are we opening up ourselves to a lot of desecration? Are we opening ourselves up to a lot of vitriol? Are we opening ourselves up to a lot of bad commentary and people insulting us and people going for us? Yes, we are. If you're going to get into the content creation space and if you're going to record yourself on a TikTok, on a this, this, on a this, this, you should, the smart thing to do is you should expect some kind of backlash. Yo, and yes, the sun. You might be lucky enough that you don't get any, but chances are quite high that you will get some sort of backlash. People will insult you about even things you cannot control. People will insult you about your nose. People will insult you about your teeth, your body. People will insult you about your hands. People will insult you about your house. People will insult you about anything and everything. And as a content creator, these are some of the things that we need to walk into the content creation space knowing. That's fine. That I can agree with. But also in this content creation space, as a creator myself, we will shoot or record whatever we want to shoot or record. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing, and this is higher grade maths, this is higher grade science, you're not going to believe what's going to come out of my mouth, and I hope that it's going to make sense to you. Here's the thing, right? We are going to record whatever it is that we want to show, and it's up to you. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Crazy concept, right? Crazy concept. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. If you don't want to follow, don't watch follow but again as a content creator we also know that a lot of people are going to hate watch us <sighs> they're just going to watch you so that they can nitpick anything that you're about to say this is what we know. But now as a content creation consumer or avid watcher myself, I have a lot of unkind words for some of the things that were said in those Twitter threads. Firstly, it's horrible for you to insult somebody about things that they cannot change. What we can take away from that as content creators is healthy criticism. But if you're going to insult somebody about how far apart their eyes are or you're going to insult them about um you know the fact that their hands are small i can't change the fact that my hands are small then you can mm. it makes sense or the fact that my toenails look a certain way that is wrong Period, point blank. That is wrong and it is uncalled for. But if you're going to give constructive criticism and say, Gato, for crying out loud, please show us a little bit more of the outside when you're outside and you're out and about. Please show us a little bit more of the outside and don't show us your face. I get that. That's constructive criticism. Yeah, I get that. But then if you're going to then talk about somebody's personal life and then bring it into insulting them and all of that. Oh. <laughs> I... <laughs> the only time I say tit for tat, butter for fat is if somebody decides to disclose their personal life and what is happening in their personal life and their views and opinions about marriage and all of this. And then you end up finding out that they were somebody who's married. Amen. Then everybody is fair game. Everybody is fair game. But if you do not know anything about that person's personal life for you to go and desecrate them online. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I will go as far as to say, I do not watch 
as a watcher, avid consumer, content creator myself, yes, but as an avid consumer of content creation, I don't watch what I don't want to watch. And that's what I'm going to keep going back to. If you find her boring, if you find me boring, please don't watch. Honestly, it's okay. I would rather have you not watch than to hate watch me. So that you, anytime a tweet like that one pops up, you use that opportunity to be an opportunity to bash other content creators. Whereas y'all don't even know half the work that goes into content creation. This is the problem. This is another problem is that I feel like content creators should put themselves in forums and spaces where we talk about all the work that goes behind content creation. You just see the end product. You don't get to see how we move our cameras around and how we plan for shoots and how we plan clothes and how we hire people, you know, to shoot us and for, for content, all these kinds of things. It's money. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's money. There's a lot of work that goes into it. I think people just seem to think we switch on a, ca a camera and we're good to go. Nah, bro. There's a lot more that goes into that. After this, I need to sit down and edit, and that takes a number of hours. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's, it's, it's really a double-edged sword when you're a creator and also at the same time when you are a... Uh, the content creator consumer like you're you're watching content creation content creation consumer right you're watching it and you're buying into it and all of that um but i don't i'm not privy to insulting someone about things that they cannot change i am very much open to constructive criticism i've been told that i'm boring and the the craziest thing is i just responded and said then don't watch it's as simple as that. But the problem is people seem to find it okay to go off and insult content creators. And now we need to have some sense of decorum and understanding that, okay, you know what? I'm not going to respond. I'm not going to be petty back because this is my space and this absolutely not. If you want to go low, I'll go to hell. Absolutely not. If you want to go low, I will go to hell. I will go to hell with you. I will go to hell with you because at this point you are not going to insult me and then have me sitting there going, hey, well, because I'm in the content creation space, I'm just going to keep quiet. Absolutely not. No, no. Mm -mm. Wendy Williams condition. Yo, that was scary. Again, I haven't had an opportunity to watch. Honestly, I don't have time to watch a lot of TV. I'm constant, I'm so busy all the time. I don't have time to watch TV. And when I do watch TV, I watch what I wanna watch and I kind of forget. I forget that, oh yeah, I wanna watch the Wendy Williams documentary. But from what I saw online, again, from all the TikToks and the clips that I saw online, it is, it is heartbreaking to see Wendy's condition. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that she, I, I forgot what they said her condition is called, but um, it's also on, uh, along the throngs of dementia as well. It's very unfortunate to see her going through all of this and knowing that she did just, I, I just don't agree with some of the people that she has around her. And when you get to Wendy's stage, you are, when you get to where Wendy is at at the moment, you are completely reliant on the people around you. So it's really difficult to know that you have people around you that you can trust, or do you actually have people around you that are just there to make a paycheck, that are just there to just, you know what, I'm just getting a paycheck out of this, I couldn't care less. And I think for me, that's what hurt me the most is that, you know, she wanted to be around her son and she was talking about being around her son and she was all around all these other people that I was just like, ah oh, man. It was really, really heartbreaking to watch. And that's the thing, right? I suppose that's the thing about money is that you're, constantly going to be surrounded with all these people, lighting people, makeup people, uh, PAs, and this and this, and all these people that how will you ever really know who you can really, really trust, right? And when it gets to a point where she is, um, she's, she is in a place where she has a debilitating situation, 
you would like to wish that she could have people around her that she can trust and even her family members saying that she they wanted to be around her they wanted to be around her to support her and all of that it was it's really painful and i don't think i would watch it for quite a while because it's a really painful watch based on what i've seen online it's a really painful watch and i'm in i'm in an era in a time in my life where i just want to watch something that's going to make me feel good or something that i'm going to learn from or something that i can just unwind to laugh at and things like that but not something that's going to make me this emotional not at this stage we're going to end this part one off with portia williams gubaria and simon Gabardia, Gabudia, I don't know. Portia Williams and her husband. Guys! I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm gonna tell you straight up, if you make your bed, you lie in it. How you get them is how you're going to lose them. How you, as Portia coming across as a bit of a gold digger, absolutely yes. Yes, she is. She's coming across as a gold digger. She found him married. I do not condone taking a married man. She found him married. She walked into this woman's house with her husband. And Fallon was the one who came onto the show as Portia's friend, right? She came onto the show as Portia's friend and Portia went and she took her man. She's an adulteress, is, if that's how you call it, I don't know. And now that shit is hitting the fan with Mr. Simon, she is out, she's done. After 15 months, it feels like they married yesterday. All the pictures that we saw, all the wonderful things that we saw, it legitimately feels like they got married yesterday. I have, I feel no sympathy for her. I really don't. So even when the things came out about how Fallon was also supposedly, allegedly um, having a, an affair, even when those things came out, that's fine. But Simon was still married when she got together with him. So I'm not going to sit here and condone and be like, ah, shame, shame, Porsche, this. No, I don't feel ah, shame for her. I really don't. All right. I don't. I don't go around taking people from partners, knowing that somebody's in a relationship. I don't go around doing that. And I don't allow anyone to infiltrate my relationships. That's just me. Okay. And now that this guy is going through a really tough time, I mean, Simon Evele. Yeah, now I, I had a lot of questions about what does this man actually do? So now all these things are coming out about fraud cases and credit card fraud and all of this, blah, blah, blah. I was just like, I need to know what this man does. When they got married, I'm like, oh, Kim but Lena. And now that things have hit the fan for him, when you expect that I'm a stick beside him, that's my man. I'm a stick beside, when you think or would like to believe that she would stick beside him, she is out. She's not even, she doesn't want to hear and nothing. The moment all those news popped off about Simon and his case and him being, you know, chances of him being uh, sent back home to Nigeria and all of this, she was like, yeah, I'm out, peace. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? What does that say? Sometimes call a spade a spade. Sometimes just call a spade a spade. Okay, that's what it is. That's uh, the NHI about how over 300 doctors are unemployed. It's tragic. It's tragic. One of my good friends is a doctor. And it's tragic when she was telling me about how she was struggling to find placement. She's fine now. I believe she's fine now. Yeah, she's good now. But she was telling me about how she was struggling to find placement. 300 doctors. That is what shambles this country is in. Absolute shambles. You have good, talented, qualified, 
ready to jump in, doctors, and nothing for them. And it's not like the patients aren't there. It's not like sick, unwell patients are not there. What is happening? All the blame needs to be placed on the government. All of it. That is where I would place most of the blame. Because these, these doctors, these qualified people are here to help the country, to help the people of the country that are ill. And here we are. So what do they end up doing? A lot of them leaving. They leave. Because where it's the opportunity. The unemployment rate in this country is atrocious. It's not just doctors. It's unfortunate that it's, it's this case of doctors. And, and I think when it comes to the doctor scandal and when the Cuban doctors were, you know what? When there was the case with the doctors and Cuba and all of, you know, I just, I can't, I can't. It's a very, very sad situation. And it's just like, you know, you go and you study something for so many years. And you know that it's a profession that is needed in any country. It is a profession that is absolutely needed. And you're sitting at home as a doctor, a qualified doctor, and you can't get a job. Why? Because funds are being misappropriated. Why? Because of corruption. Why? Because of the state of the country and now because of the state of the country and the corruption and the misappropriation of funds that are supposed to be going to doctors and health and all of this. Dwala. Dwala. <laughs> Jesus. It's... Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But vote. Vote. If you see this, I want to make sure you see this before voting day. Vote. Vote. You want some sort of change? You vote for it. That's it. All right. I'm going to end off part one here. Let me know what you think. Of course, these ones are going to be a little bit longer because I talk a little bit about each situation. I'm going to head on over to part two. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, please click like, subscribe to the channel, join the membership sp space. Join the membership space if you feel ever so inclined. And... Uh, Give a little bit of support to the channel by watching all the ads and donating to the channel if you care by giving a thanks, which is somewhere at the bottom there. And I'll see you in the next, the next one, which I'm about to record right now. And I'm going to go get a Savannah for. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.